too small. You being God, delivered me from the mall. Still can't believe all the ways you made. In my weakness, 
Welcome you to Mind Therapy tonight. Please, may we all be seated. Thank you. I want to welcome you on behalf of our senior pastors, Dr. CMD and Pastor Adenike Lamai, to tonight's Mind Therapy. Just relax because God is here. His presence is already here to deal with that thing that feel it will deal with you. His presence is here to settle those matters. His presence is here to take care of all those things that you have been crying for. Just connect, and he will meet you at the point of your need. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Hey. Put your hands up in here. I can in this place and burn down. Try to lift my hands, but I will stand. But the Lord of God said to me, In the place in my heart, I will be today. I come in this place and burn down. Try to lift my hands, but I will stand. Yeah. But the Lord of God said to me, the place where now I have a view to live. So God, I lift up my hands. Oh, my God. And a pity and pick I walk it out. I'm going to lift my hands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Open my mouth. And immediately, God, look it out. You think from top again. I came in the space of God. Now, try to lift my hands without a shout. Try to lift my hands without a shout. The Lord has said to me. For the Lord has God said to me. We can praise Him now. I'll praise Him now. I have no victory. Say I can. I can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the ending, I walk now. I am to lift up my hands. Open my mouth. In me. Let us be your disposition. It doesn't matter your condition. Let us be your disposition. Say, it doesn't matter your condition. What do we look like? Let us be your disposition. It doesn't matter your condition. Let us be 
position. No condition. Let it is me. Let it be. The disposition. Disposition. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Your condition. Your condition. Let it be. Let it be. The disposition. The disposition. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. What it's up to say. Your condition. Let it be. Let it be. The disposition. The disposition. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. What it's up to say. Disposition. I'm gonna lift up my hands, yeah. Open my mouth and immediately I'll open it up. You want to lift up your hands, yeah. Open my mouth and immediately I'll open it up. I didn't have to wait for it. I didn't have to look for it. I didn't have to wait for it. He did it to me, he did it. Let's go. I didn't have to wait for it. To wait for it, it is in the middle of the day. Hey, I didn't have to wait for it. Look for it. I didn't have to wait for it. Cause it had to be in the middle of the day. I didn't have to wait for it. I didn't have to look for it. I didn't have to wait for it. It is in the middle of the day. I didn't have to look for it. I didn't have to look for it. I didn't have to look for it. It is in the middle of the day. together for Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. Are you clapping for Jesus? Is that for Jesus? Praise the Lord. If that is for me, thank you. But if that is for Jesus, it's not okay. Please, let's put our hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. On behalf of of our senior pastors, Dr. CMD and Pastor Denny Kelamai. Once again, you are welcome to my therapy. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. Amen. You may please be seated. Praise God. I'm sure expectations are high tonight. Waiting to hear the mystery behind home advantage. Praise the Lord. But man proposes it's only God that makes it come to pass. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> the scripture says there are many plans in a man's heart, but the counsel of God will stand. Praise the Lord. Our Father in the Lord is unavoidably absent tonight. Praise the Lord. Can somebody see put his hands together for Jesus? <laughs> Praise the Lord. The FBI conference preparation is in top gear, and our guests are coming in already, and um, is on top of some of those situations. So, unfortunately, he can't be here tonight. And he sent his words. He said, "Next Tuesday, mind therapy, we are going to. Um, he's going to do that teaching, home advantage. So, please, next Tuesday, he's going to be here. Praise the Lord." And um, on Monday, I was just meditating, and God gave me a word and started teaching me some things. And after telling me, speaking to me, he said, this is what 
you will preach. And I was, I was like, preach where? For now, I'm, I'm, in a, I'm on holiday. My father and my, my mother is going to be around. I never knew he was actually preparing a word for today. Praise the Lord. How many of you are on the WhatsApp page, the church, the family WhatsApp page? If, did, you check the, did you check the time I posted that my therapy for today? Did you check the time? I think it was early hours of this morning. To tell you, as at early hours of this morning, it was so sure that our Father in Lord is going to be here. And as at Monday, God was giving, God told me I prepared something. I never knew. He said, this is what you are going to preach. Praise the Lord. So when it became impossible for him to be here tonight, the first thing that came to my mind was what God showed me and said, this is what you are going to preach. And why am I saying this? God has someone in mind. And this is how it started. Before I even opened the scriptures, opened my notes. Do you know, um, I want us quickly, just in, in a few minutes, let's quickly share this experience. How many of you have beautiful lives you live within you, but you are not living it physically? Let me explain. You know, you have beautiful ideas, everything you have, good things inside you but discover that is not um, how many of you now i want to ask you a question okay I, I want a sincere brother that is sincere i've come tonight again please pardon me oh. just pardon me sometimes i just say what i say i don't have any information i just say as i say it praise the lord <laughs> pardon me i want a sincere brother how many of you how many of sincere brother it could be uh, married men and uh, married men, that you have all the things you want to say to woo or to talk to a lady, and you know, and you got there, you discover that as beautiful as everything you have inside, you could not express yourself. Who, who can, uh, do you have anybody that, you know, you, sometimes you go as far as rehearsing. Somebody say yes. <laughs> you know, say, okay, I'm going to say this, I'm going to. And when, you know, you have all game, everything planned, and it's so well, you know that uh, uh, today, not today. And you discover that when you are to speak, you begin to, everything will just scatter. It's not going to start from ABC, you start from Z, Y, X. <laughs> you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Many people have beautiful ideas. The good life some people are living is only in their dreams and in their mind. So that was how God started with me that Monday. And he said expressively to me, he said, many people lack words for expression. Somebody say words for expression. I can't hear you say words for expression. So tonight I'll be doing a teaching on what I title words for expression. There is no expression when there are no words. When you have beautiful ideas, you have great, you know, things in mind, you have great plans. When there are no words to bring to reality what is alive in you, things remain the same. We're going to read a story in 2 Kings chapter 1, verse um, 1 to 17. 2 Kings chapter 1, from verse 1 to 17. Okay. If you are there before me, you can please read it and just read with microphone. It's a long story. And let's look at the story together. The story of Elijah. Praise. Second Kings chapter. Okay, one to seventeen. Then Moab. Please continue. Then Moab rebelled against Israel after the death of Ahab, and Hazael fell down through a lattice in his upper chamber. 
that was in Samaria and was sick. And he sent messengers and said unto them, Go, inquire of Baalzebub, the god of Ekron, whether I shall recover of this disease. But the angel of the Lord said to Elijah, the Tishbite, Arise, go up to, the, to meet the messengers of the king of Samaria, and say unto them, Is it not because this is not a god in Israel that ye go to inquire, to inquire of Baalzebub, the god of Ekron? Now therefore, thus saith the Lord, Thou shalt not come down from that bed on which thou art gone up, but shalt surely die. And Elijah departed. And when the messengers turned back unto him, he said unto them, Why are you now turned back? And they said unto him, There came a man up to meet us, and said unto us, Go, turn again unto the king that sent you, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Is it not because there is not a God in Israel that thou sendest to inquire of Bazebub, the God of Hekron? Therefore thou shalt not come down from that bed on which thou art gone up, but shalt surely die. And he said unto them, What manner of man was he that was he which came up to meet you and told you these words? And they answered him, He was an airy man, and girt, girt with a girdle of leather around his loins. And, said, and he said, It is Elijah the Tishbite. Then the king sent unto him a captain of fifty with his fifty, and he went up to him. And behold, he sat on the top of an hill, and he spake unto them, Thou man of God, the king hath said, Come down. And Elijah answered and said to the captain of fifty, If I be a man of God, then let fire come down from heaven, and consume thee and thy fifty. And there came down fire from heaven, and consumed him and his fifty. Again also he sent unto him another captain of fifty with his fifty. And he answered and said unto them, O man of God, thus hath the king said, Come down quickly. And Elijah answered and said unto them, If I be a man of God, let fire come down from heaven, and consume thee and thy fifty. And the fire of God came down from heaven, and consumed them, consumed him and his fifty. And he sent again the captain of the third fifty with his fifty. And the third captain of fifty went up, and came and fell on his knees before Elijah, and besought him, and said unto him, O man of God, I pray thee, let my life and the life of these fifty thy servant, thy servants be precious in thy sight. Behold, there came fire down from heaven, and burnt up the two captains of the former fifties with their fifties. Therefore, let my life now be precious in thy sight. And the angel of the Lord said unto Elijah, Go down with him, be not afraid of him. And he arose and went down with him unto the king. And he said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, for as much as thou art sent message to the king of Hekron, is it not because there is no God in Israel to inquire of his word? Therefore thou shalt not come down off that bed on which thou art gone up, but shalt surely die. So he died according to the word of the Lord which Elijah had spoken. And Jerome reigned in his stead in the second year of Jerome, the son of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, because he had no son. Praise the Lord. Now, um, this story, we have three captains with their men. And we have a message from the king. Captains took the same message from a king to the same person. And they got different results. Now, let's look at the three captains. What's, what actually went wrong? Was the message wrong? The person that sent the message, was it wrong to have sent that message? Or what, what happened? Can, um, let's, let's discuss this together. Praise the Lord. Uh, we have uh, someone waiting. So I want, um, please, I want you to also um, join this uh, discussion tonight. The king sent a message, sent three people the same thing to the same person, and it had different results. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's ironical that um, I also read this scripture yesterday. You read? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and for the first time, 
I saw the difference between the three captains. The first two stood at the, at, at the bottom of the mountain and called Elijah to come down. But the third captain went up to meet Elijah and pleaded for his life. He pleaded for his life. Yes, and the life of the people that were with him. You know, it was a different thing for them to stay at the foot of the mountain and call, command him to come down. But this other guy went up the mountain. If you notice, the angel said, Elijah should go ahead and go down with him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together for him. All right, I want other people to also. Okay, uh, Brother Mo is there. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, to add to what has been said, I think it's the manner of approach. The manner of approach. That mattered in the um, three um, captains. Okay. The third one saw the outcome of the other two, and he knew he wasn't to go that way. And by wisdom, he knew the by right wisdom. He knew the right thing to do. Okay. And that made him found, find favor in the sight of Elijah. Elijah. Praise Praise the Lord. Let's put our hands together. Okay. Barista, after Barista, I'll come into the because his ministers that are talking. So I want you to also contribute so that it won't be as if it's a, met, a meeting that we have had. That's what we are bringing. All right, Barista. The story you can see a very big difference in what we call in literature diction, which okay. is a choice of words. A choice of words. You see, there are times that you you miss opportunity because of your choice of word. I want to please say that again. There are times that we miss opportunity we miss because opportunity. of our choice of word. Not world. because it's not our opportunity. Not at all. Not because it's not time. Not at all. But because of our choice, our choice of words. Word. And you can see the first two commanders. Who are you to tell a God general to come down? That's, that looks very insulting to the personality and the caliber of person Elijah was. He's a man who called upon fire and fire will come down. This is a man that had a very intimacy with God, a fellowship with God, and you walked down to, because you were coming from the position of a king, and you think everything is by command. You commanded him to come He's down. He's a commander now. <laughs> It doesn't, most often it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. Most often. Most, most often. often it doesn't work that way. Beautiful. And then you could see the third commander using a very appealing words rather than commanding words. Mm. Uh, I always, uh, as a father, if my child will always walk down and begin to command, that they give me. No, I say, no, stop there. You can't command. You can only persuade and appeal mm. because of my position as the father. And also as my position as a husband. Uh -huh, Madame knows. So <laughs> <laughs> it's, not by, it's not by command. It's by some very good choice of word. Good choice of word. Let's put our hands together. But hallelujah. Okay, praise the Lord. Now let me, let me continue. We'll come back to this story. But I want you to uh, understand uh, what... Um, uh, Bra Femi, Bra uh, Bar Sain Yang, and Bra Mo said, you know, very correct. Praise God. Don't forget, I said the title of this teaching. Okay, I can see your hand because there's no light. That's why I didn't see your hand. <laughs> well, for me, I'm fascinated about the second commander. The second commander. Because you've seen what happened to the first commander and his 50. Uh -huh. And he did not read the situation, he was unaware <laughs> of the environment. <laughs> like, he did not, I don't think he valued the lives of his 50. He uh, just went there and made the same mistake. No, maybe the first commander was a weakling. <laughs> and he's a strong man. So, so I think the, the third one, he had perception of what his environment, he knew his environment. Mm. He understood what had happened before. So he took learning from the mistakes of others. Mm. And then I think he valued the life of those he's commanding. Because the he did not just plead for his life, he pleaded for their lives as well. So I think he was thinking about his men. Not just the command from the king. He was thinking, if I go with not this command, not just the commandment the or king, the command of the king. He was thinking of the people he was leading. Oh. Um, this, these guys, their life are in my hand. I have to present this message well to secure their life as Let's well. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. So we'll come back to the story. Okay. You have the microphone already. Okay. Praise the Lord. 
I just want to add to what everyone has said. Okay. I think uh, the third commander, the third general, is a Yoruba man. (laughs) 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 He's a Yoruba man. Yes, I think the man did just go with the right choice of words. The guy went, he knelt. Oh. You know, when you give honor, you get access. Uh, it's not only your brother kneel down. <laughs> yes, I, I'm just, <laughs> yeah, just kidding. And, and God spoke to Elijah. You can imagine. And God spoke po- to Elijah. Praise the Lord. It was not the words that appealed to Elijah. The words appealed to the angel that was with Elijah. And the angel spoke to Elijah. It's what that Elijah, the words were not sweet in the ears of Elijah. It was sweet in the ears of God. In the angels. Let's put our hands together. We'll come back to the story. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, I want you to please be attentive tonight. Please, I want to, you know, it's as if I'm begging and begging, and it's because of, of my experience. I said on Sunday that possibly I'll just have to go for counseling. When I speak, I speak. Maybe don't take it serious until there's consequences. I don't, I, don't, I don't speak. I don't teach if I don't have a revelation to do so. That's the truth. And mostly, most times, is my teachings address issues. So please, there's someone here tonight that somebody is about, God is about to give you a breakthrough and you will not miss it in Jesus' name. Now, intentions are beautiful. Feelings, you have good feelings, wonderful, you have ideas, you have vision, you have wisdom, you have goals, you have understanding, you have knowledge. But if you don't have good words, they can't come to reality. If you don't have, just like Barista said, a right choice of words to express your feelings, it can be misunderstood. They can misunderstand your feelings. And when you don't have the good, the right choice of words to express, uh, to, 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 to communicate your vision, you have, people will not follow you. I want you to understand that wisdom is in the mind, is in the heart. Knowledge is inside. Understanding is inside. It is words that brings them out. You can't know a wise man by just looking at at him. You know a wise man by what? By what he says. So many are struggling to, you know, they have beautiful intentions, they have plans, they have everything. Everything is just good inside them. Now, let me shock you. Many ministers of God, they have revelations. God has delivered, given them revelation, they have what to teach. But they don't have the right words, the good words to communicate what God has told them or what God has taught them. So at the end of the day, what God is saying is not being said to the people because the communication, the word is missing. I used to know a man of God because he was not schooled. He works in the miraculous. He will, when he wants to perform, do a miracle in the name of the Lord, it, it will be as if he was performing magic and there were miracles. You know, things will be happening and, you know, he was misunderstood. But his problem was that he does not have words to communicate what he's trying to do. It looks like magic. How can somebody just look at you and say, as if he's the one that is turning your neck. So when you don't have words, intentions, visions, ideas don't come to reality. Words for expression. The power is in the world, not in the knowledge, not in the wisdom, and not in the understanding. The power is in the world, is in the delivery. It's in the delivery. Romans, um, um, Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21. Please let me open to Proverbs 18, 21, and read to the microphone. So it's very important that as you are asking for your desires, ask God to give you words to communicate your desire. Very important. Romans 18, 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. 
And they that love it shall eat the fruits thereof. They that love it shall eat. Death and life are in the power. There is a power that is in the tongue that can hold, that can make a wise man foolish. Praise the Lord. There is a power that's what is in the tongue. If intentions, your feelings are not communicated rightly, you can lose the purpose. Praise the Lord. Words performs the magic, the miracle. Have you seen a spiritual person that don't speak? There's no, see, even, um, I don't know, was there a father in law that said, he said something about even juju that takes faith or something to make it work, something. Yeah, that, yeah. Now, even those, the person that wants to perform one, uh, put one uh, thing together for you, they don't just put it, it together. It's not what they put together that works for you. It's what they said to what they put together that works. Praise the Lord. There is, no, there is no communication of power without words. So if words are not communicated and not well chosen, if you choose the wrong words for the right motive, the result will be wrong. So many have been, have been um, uh, they, are, they are living the best of their life within themselves. Before they do it, they enjoy, ah, this is it. No, they have everything. But when it comes to the point of delivery, they lose everything. What's for expression? Job chapter 6, verse 25. He said, how possible are right words? How possible are right words? Isaiah chapter 50, verse 4. Spoke about the word in season. The word in season. Hallelujah. So it's good to have you are wise, you have knowledge, you have, you have studied, you have, you know, I don't know in your school days, university days, you know, there are lecturers, you know, that this lecturer or this teacher knows this subject very well. But you, it's sound. But you don't want to stay in their class because they can't teach you well. Praise the Lord. It's different knowing. It's different from communicating what you know. And there are some teachers or lecturers that are not as good as them. When they teach you or they lecture you, it's as if they open your brain. Now, it's not all those that are not doing well academically that are not good. Some of them are not doing well academically because of the people that are actually training them academically. Some students hate mathematics. Some people hate mathematics to today. Some of us are sitting you don't like mathematics. Not because, uh, mommy, you raise your hand, you don't like mathematics. Not because you can't be good at mathematics, but because they teach you well. He knows it. Some lecturers will just come to class, and when they, when they discover that there's no how to communicate, they'll just say, they just carry their this thing and be dictating notes. And they will dictate and dictate and say, good day. And they walk in. And you come and sit for the exam. All through the semester is a uh, note, note, note. I, I say you should go and read. You don't understand. You go and read. Sometimes it's difficult to pass. Some, those lecturers, it's difficult to pass. Or they pass you. Because even they themselves, they've not been able to communicate what they want from you very well. <laughs> Do you understand? So, it's not enough to know or to be wise. But words are very important. I want to go quickly say tonight that words are different, it's quite different from voice. It is voice that amplifies the world. When there is voice and there is no word, it becomes a noise. When there is what? There is voice and there is no word, it becomes what? Noise. A baby of, 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 of six months or seven months, how many months does the baby begin to talk? They will, go, da, 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 they will be talking. They have voice. 
but they don't have the right word. So we say, keep quiet. You are disturbing. Be quiet. Now, sometimes some children, will, service will be going on here, and they will be doing their whole day. We're talking, we'll tell them to keep quiet. Ah, are you sure? The angel is not speaking to them. <laughs> God is not speaking to them. Because what they are saying was not expressed in words, it becomes what? A noise. So it's not enough to have voice. You must have what? Words. Very important. This is a month of fatherhood. When father does not have the right words to train children, they turn into annoyance. Have you seen where anointing becomes annoyance before? <laughs> you know, he said, if I get you, if I go, 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 he has, he has lost the words to express his feelings. And uh, the child, because the child was not understand what saying, and child want to say, daddy, what are you saying? You just speak something. <clears throat> when you don't have good words to express your feelings, you get angry. You, you, you. Some people don't get angry, they will just start crying. Someone is very, you are feeling so bad and so hard, you are high, and you can't express what you say, they, they will just burst into tears. They are not crying because what, what uh, you said or did is paining them. They are crying because they could not express themselves. And some will get angry. That's why they will talk. And you know how our mothers are very good. They are very good with words. By the time they mix it and mix it, they have written a book. Why are tense? <laughs> and when the man is over that, this is she's on chapter ten. And okay, why not? You just okay. You don't know anything. I'm your husband here. When you don't have words for expression, it could be dangerous. Praise the Lord. So when you are praying for ideas, when you are asking God. Make sure you ask that God give me words. Some people don't receive help because they don't have the right words. To, just the Bible says, say, you want me to give you some, me, to give some, uh, commanding me. You don't understand. Daddy, pay my school fees. Son, go and pay your school fees. <laughs> you know, it could, it, there could be answers like that. When there are no right words, the Yoruba says, I don't know how to put it in English. It said, uh, uh, um, uh, good words bring kola notes from the pockets. Good words. Have you met professional liars before? As in professional liars. They are professional because you know they are lying and you still believe them. <laughs> you know that this is a lie. And you be, why did you believe them? The choice of words. You know, ah, uh, 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 this is a lie. No. But you said, well, don't worry. I will do it. I know it's a lie, but I will do it. Why? And you see sincere people. They don't have people to follow them because they lack words. Their sincerity. They say, ah, God sees my heart. It's God that sees your heart. Me, I'm not seeing what is there. Okay, go and pray that God should show what's in my heart. I have not prayed that God should show what is in my life. Finish. It's what is in your heart that should go and pray. So words are important. Somebody say words are important. Now in John chapter 1. John chapter 1. From verse 1. Let's look at John chapter 1. Hallelujah. John chapter 1 from verse 1. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Verse 3, all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In the beginning was the world, and the world was with God, and God is the world. So you understand now that it's not out of place to ask God for words, for expression. Because the world itself is God. When words leaves from you, you only have a voice to amplify the word. Praise the Lord. You have the voice to amplify the word. So you must have the word, especially the right word and the word in season. You must have a relationship with the word, which is God, that gives you the word in season. That gives you the word in season. 
And let's see what happened in verse 19 of the same, uh, of the same uh, John chapter 1. Okay, let's say uh, verse um, uh, 21, from verse 21. And they asked him, talking about John, What then art thou, Elias? And he said, I am not. Art thou prophet? And he answered, No. Verse 22. They said, Then they said they unto him, Who art thou, that we may give an answer to them that sent us? What sayest thou of thyself? Is that written in your Bible? Let's take that last pass together. I want to go. What sayest thou of thyself? It's so serious that people don't have words to describe who they are. And you want people to believe in you. You know? Somebody say, hey, I don't, I pray, Pastor, pray for me. I lack, I, I lack help. I don't have help. People don't help me. I, I, now, how do you request or ask for the help? You don't have, now they ask him that, okay, we have asked you everything. You are not giving us, you are not suggesting to, we were suggesting to you. Okay, what says thou of yourself? As you are sitting down, what says thou of yourself? You are so good in telling people your problem that you have forgotten that there's a good side of you. You have good words to describe your situation, but you don't have words enough to describe your personality. You are going for an interview. You don't have enough words to describe. I know, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> I can work under pressure. Uh, I can do, we know. Okay, how can you do it? Tell us, you know, you don't have enough words to, to express or describe who you are. They have to ask John, you are not a liar. You are not, okay, what, says, what are you saying about yourself? I want you to look at somebody side. what are you saying about yourself? And do you know what? People believe what you say about yourself more than what people say about you. People believe what you say about yourself more than what other people say about you. But do you know why they believe what other people say about you more than you? Because you don't say anything about yourself. It's what people say about you that is ringing. They are not hearing your voice. Luke chapter 20, he said, he said, I will give you a mouth and a wisdom. I will give you a mouth and a wisdom. The mouth is different from the wisdom. Do you get that? The mouth is different from what? The wisdom. Mouth does not mean wisdom. Wisdom does not mean mouth. There are many people that are wise, but they don't have mouth. So what say out of yourself? Somebody look at you and say, you are good for nothing. He, that's his opinion. But look at me. By the time I tell you 100 things about me that is good, you will forget that good for nothing. Somebody look at you and told you and said things that you are not. You are fighting the person. Now, let me tell you. If somebody abuses you and you get angry, it's because you believe them. You don't get it. Somebody said... Uh, give me one, one, uh, something, some, someone said, uh, <laughs> but it's time like to speak Yoruba, it's time to speak Yoruba now. Somebody said you are stupid. I said, me, I'm stupid, and you get angry, you start Do you know why you are angry? You believe you are stupid. Okay, you are not wrong, okay? And you are hungry. That I said you are not wrong. No, what do you mean by that? My name is wrong. Okay. Now, does my opinion change your name? You don't get angry. I, I, I think I'm not your father. I'm not your mother. I was not ever. You, as a matter of fact, the name you told me is what I should believe. You are not angry that I'm calling you. The, no, that is not who you are. You don't understand. So sometimes when those things get us angry, it touches the part in us that one way or the other, you believe what you're trying to say. No, it's not true. It's not true. He just look at me and amuse me. 
It is not possible. It's not true. Because you have not been doing good things. What says that of yourself? You are hungry what people are saying about you because they don't have a description for you. Praise the Lord. Wives, get good words to describe your husband. Husband, enough good words to describe your wife. Honestly, there's this, I don't know if we have it in uh, English. There's this place name, there's this place in, in, in Yoruba, but it's placing you, they call it Oriki. They start saying all those things, saying all those things, saying all those things, saying all those things, saying all those things. Your head will be bigger than unnecessary. You know, they will just be, they will just be, and you just be happy. You bring your, or a musician is singing, and he's just singing, and that, you bring, you know, he's just singing good things. Now, how happy are you when they are praising you? Do you understand? Some people, somebody's money will be in your pocket. You will spend it. When you finish spending it, you are going around, remember, that, ah, I spend the money that I, <laughs> that's not do you, do you know why? Because of the joy. No, how, that is somebody saying that. So how much more is it when you those good, those good things about yourself? You, you feel good. I, let me tell you, if you are waiting for somebody to praise you, you may wait forever. You may wait forever. You may say good things to yourself. They ask John, okay, what sayest thou of thyself? What sayest thou of thyself? Praise the Lord. And when he continued, and they said unto him, Who art thou? Okay, that what said that right? Verse 23, he said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as said, as said the prophet Isaiah. He said, I am the voice. Chapter 1, verse 1 said, He said, What? In the beginning was the wall. The word was and God was the wall. In verse uh, 23. So, uh, John was saying what? I am the voice. Now, you have the voice. You don't have the word. That's why the first thing that you do when you, are, when you were born is just to cry. Sometimes they beat them. Pa, pa, so that they can cry. You have the voice. But you need the word. Tonight, God is going to give you right words in Jesus' name. I said God is giving you right words in Jesus' name. Now, let me learn... The way I'm going tonight, let's go back to the story. Now, every wisdom is expressed by discretion. Every wisdom is what? Is expressed by discretion. Now, the third captain, don't forget that they are captains. And they are working with the king. Um, is it the, the, the security chiefs and they are working with the president. Now let's paint it that way. The security chiefs working with the president, commander-in-chief of uh, armed forces ruling uh, be, of, of uh, you know, they are working and the commander-in-chief gave them instruction. Go and bring him. They are security, the security chiefs so they left in their might and with the strength and the weight of the person that is sending them to go and meet Elijah. They have forgotten that there is what is bigger than any position. It's called the word. Listen, words are bigger than any bigger than anybody. Words. So they don't know that that world is bigger than them and bigger than the person that sent them. Now, this is what I want you to look at tonight. He said, Oh, man of God, come down. And he said, If you are saying the truth, fire, come down. <laughs> it was not Elijah that told them that he's a man of God. They said, Oh, man of God. It came from their mouth. Oh, man of God. Come down. What did Elijah, Elijah say? He said, if I be the man of God, 
let fire come. That means they were taken by the words of their mouth. He did not use any other word against them. He used what they said against them. He didn't use any other word against them. Man of God, come down. If I be what you say. That's why it's very good. You say good is about yourself. Say right words. Very important. As a matter of fact, pray for right words. Speak to God and ask God give me a word, right words to speak. It's as good as when you want to talk to your husband on some certain situation. If you don't have the right words, it's, it's gone. Some words, I, I, I can't talk to my husband. Is difficult. Your husband is not difficult. You don't have the right words. I've always suggested to women, make sure when your husband is eating, you are there. There are stories you will hear that you have never heard. When he's eating. <laughs> when your husband is eating and he's enjoying the food, um, uh, um, you'll be asking you, how did you cook the food? As if it's not through fire or through pot or whatever. How else will a woman cook the food? You see, when he's enjoying it, how did you cook this food? Ah, this one, um, you know, remember, um, I remember when I was in uh, primary school. The story has started. And when he discovered, I get to a point, said, said, honey, said, what is it? I, and there's something I want to discover. Oh, don't worry, go ahead, discuss it with me. There are right situations to, to discuss right things with right words. Nobody is difficult. Everybody is a child before right words. Everybody. Look at David. Psalm 51. Oh, there is no uh, this thing. Let's, let, let me quickly read Psalm 51. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Nobody, everybody is a child before the world. Psalm 51. Is it 51 or 50? Aha, uh -huh. Psalm 1. Let me start from verse 1. He said, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness. He has started, though. There's nobody that knows how to get God that they gave it. No wonder God said, He's a man after my heart. Do you know what happened? He even said, Even David, the throne will not depart from, even if this generation is sin, he will chastise them. He started, he said, <laughs> have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness. He's, no, he's telling him that he has loving kindness. And I'm asking from what you have. O God, according, to, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgression. He's requesting, he's praising the person. You know, he's requesting, he's praising I know you have this. I know God has provided for you. I know God, you know, as in, he's pressing and he's requesting. It's not that, see, I know you don't have it, though. you must look for it, though. Anyhow, you will get it. <laughs> David. Verse 2. He said, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me, cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgression. Ah. You are the father. And he's talking to you this way. He said, for I acknowledge my transgression. And my sins, my sin is ever before me. Against thee and thee only have I sinned. No, he's, asking, he's telling Against thee and thee. See, forget what any other person is talking about my sin. I didn't sin against anybody. I sinned against you. You don't get it. Somebody said, <laughs> he said on the TV, and he said that, um, you know, I've got to the situation whereby, you know, when, when you steal money and you, you, you do good and you do well with the money you have stolen. And somebody now came and said, this person is a thief. And everybody, if you tell them, yes, is our thief. <laughs> you don't understand. They said, this one is our thief. We, we are not saying he's not a thief, but it is our thief. 
They know that what he's doing is wrong, but we are the one that is enjoying it. So please, he's our team. That is why it's very difficult to say somebody is not doing something right because those that are enjoying what is not doing, what is that thing, will go against you. In 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 the city of unrighteous people, the only righteous man is the sinner. In the city of unrighteous, the only righteous man. Righteousness become a sin in the city of unrighteous people. So David said, Against you have I sinned. And done this evil in your sight. That thou mightest be justified when thou speakest. And be clear when thou judgest. Behold, Father, it's not my fault. I was separate in iniquity. And in sin did my mother conceive me. <laughs> you don't understand. I, I, it's, I, I've done this thing as is wrong and I acknowledge. But you know what? I was programmed, I was shaped in iniquity. And in sin did my mother conceive me. But thou desirest truth in the inward parts. And in the hidden part thou shake, shalt make me to know wisdom. Pour me with iso, and I shall be clean. And wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy that the, and gladness, that the bones which thou art broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from thy sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God. As a matter of fact, God, my heart is dirty. So if I continue in this dirty heart, it's because you did not create a, just, see, create in me a clean heart. And in you what? A right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence and take not the Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of my salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. Then will I teach transgressions thy way. Now, he still went back to tell God that, see, after you have done this, People like me that see sinning because he knows there is joy in heaven over everyone that gives that, that is saved. So he still talk God, God, just forgive me. I will bring many people like me. Now, this is David speaking to God. These are words that, that get into the heart of God. How do you speak to God? How do you speak to people? So you need to ask for words, words. In communicating, you must use discretion. I'm always careful to say this, but let me say it. Sometimes, some people say, me, I call a spade a spade. I call a spade a spade. And, uh, and unfortunately, the spade is spade. That same spade is what they used to call them. So I used to say, sometimes, it's better not to call a spade a spade. It's better to call a spade if I'm implement. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Sometimes it's better. How did I get that? God told Samuel, For how long do you want to mourn Saul? I have rejected him. Fill your horn and go anoint me a king in the house of Jesse. And Samuel said, My daddy, my daddy. What will I tell Saul I have come to do in his environment? Because he knows if a prophet appears, it's not like these days. If a prophet appears, have you come peaceably? There's a message. There's, you must ask, what should I tell? Because he told, when I said, God, God didn't tell him that. Tell Saul that I've told you that you have come to anoint uh, David in his stead. That have rejected him. Did God tell him that? He will what? See, he will not fulfill the purpose of God in that place. Many people are not fulfilling the purpose of God because they don't have the right words to prepare the, to present the purpose. God taught him what to do. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, in, this, in, 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 in expression, discretion is important. Presentation is very important. The king did not send the third one to go and kneel before Elijah. He used discretion. 
Apart from what he has seen, but Jeremy said the second person, in fact, it's surprising really. Somebody have died with 50. And you see, went there to go and do, he didn't learn. But the other person, two people have died. So I should not be the third person. So he used discretion. So words are very important. When you don't have the right words, when you don't have the words, you discover that you live the best of your life within yourself. People don't even know what you have to offer. So you need words. Say, say, you need, say I need the right words. Say, I need the right words. And, and may I say, there are many businesses in, inside many people seated here. There are books that are not written. There are songs that the world have not heard about it. They are seated inside. Oh, there are great inventions. There are ideas. There are words from God inside people. But nobody is hearing it because what? We don't have the right words to express it. But listen, after tonight, God will give words to your vision. God will give words to your ideas. God will give words to your good intentions in the name of Jesus. Romans 7, he said, the earnest expectation of the creator is what? Is waited for the manifestations of the sons of God. But the sons of God don't have the right words to express what is inside them. He said, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. There are great treasures that is hidden inside of you. Many are not bringing it out because what? They don't have the right words. It's very important that you have the right words. I remember uh, there was a year in UI. I used to be a very conservative person. Reverend Benga Kosela called me and he told me, he called me, he said, come. He said, he told me, he said, you can't live life and fulfill vision.